special treat to end, uh, end the day, I think, right? Um, another race car driver you may have heard of, six-time NASCAR Sprint Cup Series champion, a driver who just tied Dale Earnhardt for career wins and still going, everybody, Mr. Jimmy Johnson. How you doing? Good, to see you. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome to Bristol. Wearing your Superman red, I guess? Uh, yeah, uh, not on purpose, but it's the only <laughs> one I have in the closet that works. Uh, just ca catch everybody Everything up. Everything else on the motorhome in California. <laughs> <laughs> catch everyone up though, uh, you're wearing uh, the Superman uh, paint scheme this weekend, correct? Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Um, Junior and I are already harassing each other pretty well on social media. And then tomorrow morning we leave pretty early to, to head west in do a press junket out in LA with, uh, with the actors from the movie. So uh, it'd be fun. We're gonna have our, have our race cars there in, in California at the studio and uh, spend some time with those guys. It'd be, it'd be neat. Good stuff. Now six championships, 76 wins. Your crew chief calls you Superman, but only one of those wins was at Bristol Motor Speedway. What's up with that? <laughs> yeah, Bristol has been hard for me to figure out over the years. Um, it is my favorite race to watch. Um, it doesn't matter if it's trucks, Xfinity, um, old cup races, a replay of a current cup race, but driving it is just so different. And, it, and the repave has helped. My, my average finish has increased dramatically since the resurfacing has taken place. But um, man, it's just weird to have a track that you love and enjoy so much, you love to watch um, and dream of racing on, and then get in the car and I'd run mid-pack at best. So, and then crashed a lot of cars in the process. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough racetrack for sure. What's that yeah, like when one of the best ever that. says this is a hard thing to do? Yeah, it's, it's a, definitely a unique racetrack. Jimmy, you were talking about, um, on the way over here, just intensity of Bristol and heart rate and stuff. Touch on that. I think that was so interesting. Yeah, I wore my heart rate monitor um, last, I guess I've worn it a few times now. Um, but what was interesting to me is through the events that I've competed in, triathlons and 5Ks and half marathons and stuff, I have an idea of where my top end for my, my heart rate is. And I, I virtually uh, have seen that in the race car at Bristol Motor Speedway. So it, it's amazing to think that in the race car you're working that hard, but you, you really are. And, and not only physically, um, you know, the demands of the high banks of the racetrack, but also from a, a, an adrenaline standpoint. I mean, it is such a rush to go around the racetrack there, and I know that impacts your heart rate some and, and brings it up. So. Uh, I think my, my heart rate, the top I've seen in, in a 5K has been like 172, and I, I saw 165 in the race car from, from a heart rate standpoint. So, and it wasn't just one race, and it's been in each race that I've, I've uh, worn it. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. And I'd say my average heart rate, is once you're in a green flag run and settle in, it's still in the 150s, which is upper end for me. It's, it's amazing how physical the track really is. Wow. Certainly some of the top athletes in sports, if there were any question after that. 2016 has been pretty good to you so far. Uh, recent third out in what, Las Vegas, and then you win in Atlanta. The SMI track has been pretty good to you so far this <laughs> yeah, year. I thought of it that way, but yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, with the chase format, how important is, wins are always fun, wins are always important, but is it an added importance when you get it early in the season? It, it is. I mean, it, it's also, um, it's a blessing. It can also be, be a problem, and the only problem side to it can be, you just get a little lethargic as the year wears on and maybe don't enter the chase as sharp as you need to be. Um, we've always worked very hard to not let that happen. Um, it's still tough. I mean, when, when pit stops don't really matter or pit calls or you know, things like that don't really matter, it's, it, people don't make mistakes in those scenarios. But when they do matter and when, when you do have the pressure on the line, um, you know, stuff seems to pop up in, in those first race, you know, race or two, I should say, first few races. Uh, mistakes are made that you typically don't see. And I think it's just related to pressure. So we want to put pressure on ourselves as we get to the end of uh, the regular season. Um, one of the great perks of winning early, um, we've got nothing to lose. So if it's a risky two-tire stop or call, why not? Let's do it. If we want to stretch it on fuel, let's do it. We can gamble and try to win more races this way. Can you imagine if Bristol was a chase race? <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> <laughs> the intensity, oh, I, can't, I can't even imagine what that would be like. I would personally like to pick my own chase races. I mean, every driver would love to pick their own. <laughs> well, what was, uh, Jerry asked a good question, Justin Algar, earlier, but uh, what, uh, what was your first memory of this place? For me, I, I guess, um, running here in the then Bush series, um, I thought that I had seen a bank track and a fast track <laughs> 
Um, everybody told me that Anderson, Indiana, a little small quarter mile, was similar to this track. Um, I won my first pole ever in a stock car at Anderson and ASA, and I thought, man, I'm ready for that Bristol. I'm, you know, <laughs> going to be be ready to go. Man, I was so so out of my out of sorts coming here. It, it's such a big track and so much speed. Um, the anticipation of how much throttle you can run, you don't sense the car, you just kind of anticipate and guess. So once the car is far enough into the corner, if you're going to be fast, you just have to commit and stand on the gas and go and deal with what happens after that. <laughs> so it, it's, a, it's a different racetrack. Um, I have hit the inside wall, especially off of turn two, I don't know how many times, from guessing on the throttle and when to get into it and losing it and spinning out. Um, but it's, it is such a unique racetrack. And now that we run up by the wall, um, that, that's just something no driver grows up unless unless grows up doing unless you drive at Anderson I'm sorry not Anderson, but maybe uh, Winchester or Salem and uh, Darlington for that matter so there's only a few opportunities to run the wall and, and now Bristol has that and it's it's crazy I mean you're dealing with a few inches um, from a lot of grip to no grip and that no grip area are all the marbles from the tires and the dirt and dust so it's uh, it's a tricky way to get around I've, I've heard drivers talk about the fans and being able to see the fans at Bristol. Do, can you see the fans when you're running in Bristol? You can. Uh, when something happens, you can see the motion of the fans maybe standing up and flash bulbs popping. Um, certainly at the finish, if you're not the lucky guy winning in a night race, you can see the flashlights going. Um, I've been on the back stretch and have seen people stand and didn't hear there was a wreck yet and just knew, just because I could <laughs> see the whole, the whole place standing up. I'm like, okay, better let off. <laughs> Something's coming. One of the best things your crew has come up with in past years is the, the driver entrance music. You get to come out, you get to pick your own song. Uh, do you have much say in that when you come out to a song that you pick, or is there a, a memorable one that you can think of? It's, it's always fun to do it. I mean, it's tough trying to pick the song, um, that part we all struggle with. But the, uh, the opening ceremonies themselves are so much fun. And um, I'm, I'm in a house full of girls, and, and my, my youngest right now are already lobbying for Taylor Swift. <laughs> so it, it's hard to come up with something cool and, and macho for racing and then the supports you get at home. You know, my, my daughter wants me to walk out to Bad Blood or something. Like <laughs> the fact that I even know that song scares me, but um, they, they run the radio right now in the house. You've got the one win here. Oh, I mean, what, what's another good memory for you? Uh, I don't know, maybe one of your teammates or what have you, but um, other than that win, what, what's something you remember racing-wise about Bristol? Uh, first thing is Jeff Gordon's bump and runs to uh, to Rusty Wallace. As I grew up a Rusty fan, so yeah. thanks for mentioning that. <laughs> <laughs> Probably some guy named Earnhardt. Yeah, yeah I was going to say Earnhardt, and uh, I said he, I guess he said he was trying to rattle Terry's cage, and yeah. I'm pretty sure he did <laughs> twice. Um, those, I guess those are four races. Those four come come up pretty quick, and the one where Terry won and pulling into victory lane with the car wrecked. Um, as a fan watching, I thought, man, if I ever have a chance to go there, I want to win a race like that. Pulling to victory lane, steam shooting out of the hood, car wrecked. Did you ever ask him about that? And it was a former Hendrick guy, so I don't know if you ever got a chance. I can't remember if I did. <laughs> I remember Earnhardt, when, when he did win the second time, I remember his reception of the fans. That was shocking to hear. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it was. Isn't that right, Don Hawk? <laughs> <laughs> What do you say to the fans? Because you know it better than anything, the, the, the test that Bristol is, the excitement that it can bring. What do you say to the fans that are coming out to the Food City 500 and, and the ones that uh, haven't bought their tickets yet? <laughs> well, I'm, honestly, it's a race that I suggest all my friends come and see and experience. And um, if I wasn't racing in it, I'd buy a ticket to go watch it myself. It, it is such an awesome facility. The, uh, the improvement of the new television that's going in is crazy. It, I saw it on the way over. and. To see these, I don't know what you call them, but those outriggers of sorts hanging off the side of the building and cables going in to support the television. Um, you know, the, the track puts on a great show. Bruton pays attention to all the details, so it's a great fan experience, corporate experience. Um, you look what's on top of the Goodyear building now and, and the area to sit and watch. Uh, and there's just a lot of neat stuff going on. It's, it's a fun racetrack. I can't even imagine some of the things you've seen change. Racing, you know, climbing the ranks and now you go to places like Charlotte with the big TV, uh, Texas with the big TV, and now you got this other one hanging. I mean, what's that been like as a driver to see the, the improvements that tracks have made over the years? It, it's crazy to see it. Um, you know, it just shows how big our sport is and how important it is for the fan experience. And I, I know everybody's aware of that, but when you look at what happened in Daytona and uh, the, the Daytona Rising Project and then the continued work that all the tracks put in to improve 
the fan experience, to bring families out. Um, you know, we, we do a lot with the racetracks, and I volunteer my time. And we offer a ticket program for families to come in for a discounted rate. Um, I volunteer some time in the morning to go see these kids and, and hang out and do a question and answer uh, uh, session with them. And we've partnered with NASA, and NASA is actually bringing in educators to help um, have a little STEM class that takes place and to compare race cars and rocket ships. So to see the detail um, going into the fan experience across across the entire series is pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, um, talking about Colossus, Bruton... We were riding around earlier. He allowed me to verify that if you take our four screens and put them together, that we're going to have the largest screen. We're bigger than Texas or Charlotte, right? So now we get the record. So you can let Eddie Gossage and Marcus Smith know we hold the record for the largest screen. You guys screen. are always competing against each other. It's, just, it's like race car drivers, even off the track. If they were racing tricycles, I feel like you'd be racing and competing. Absolutely. There's no better competition than one with a teammate. It yeah. just makes you better and stronger. Oh, I can't imagine what those SMI meetings are like, trying to outdo each other. Uh, just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. I do also want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Lisa and Tammy from Food City, our good partners. Food City is the second longest running sponsor in NASCAR from an entitlement standpoint. That's amazing. It's unheard of. Uh, they're great partners. Thank you for being here. Talking the fan experience, uh, I got to imagine great packages available for those fans coming out in a few weeks. Come on out. We've got great opportunities, $99 for the whole weekend. Um, come join us. Tickets still available. And, and you will be amazed with uh, Bruton tells us every day, you inspect what you expect, and he wants it to be an amazing experience for the race fans, and that's what we work for every day. Right. And this is the biggest year ever at Bristol Motor Speedway. That's saying a lot, given all the history here. Uh, let me get your thoughts, because you've raced here. You've never played football here, though. Could you ever imagine such a thing? No, I'm excited to, to see it. We'll be in Richmond racing, but uh, I, I know that it's been on the books for a year or two now, and yeah. it's exciting. I can't wait to see the finished product. Yeah, good stuff. Well, thank you for joining us here at Bristol this thank weekend. You. And, um, you know, good luck for the rest of the season. And we know you're locked in, so don't get complacent, I guess. Absolutely. Is what we'll tell you. That's, the, that's the goal. <laughs> Jimmy Stay Johnson, hungry. everybody. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks.